Let's take a closer look at this and other stories with Kevin Cirilli, chief Washington correspondent for Bloomberg News. He's also the anchor of Bloomberg Radio, Sound On. Kevin, good morning. It's great to be here. So let's start with this. The president continues to ratchet up his, uh, his tough talk on illegal immigration. Last week it was, we can't take you anymore. This week it's, we're sending you all to sanctuary cities. How are Republican lawmakers sitting with this? Well, you know, it depends on which Republicans you ask. You know, I was speaking with senior sources and uh, to lawmakers in the Senate. They're a bit uneasy, especially some of these lawmakers who are up for re-election in 2020. But on the flip side of that, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell actually signaling that potentially he might be open to bringing some type of immigration package in the three months between now and the August recess. But that said, uh, Jared Kushner was up on the Hill with the president's chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney. They met with a group of Democrats, but there's a lot of divisiveness, to put it mildly, on the issue of immigration. Is there, is there any common ground that they can work on? On the issue of some economic aspects of the immigration debate, the manufacturing community, which definitely has President Trump's ear, has definitely uh, been urging to, to find some type of middle ground on this. But in an era where Stephen Miller, crafted in the more Steve Bannon-esque wing of the Trump ideology, has emerged within the Trump administration as another leading voice, it's going to be difficult to see how, why Democrats would want to work on an issue like that with them. This past week, we've also seen the upheaval at the top of yes. the DHS. What's going on at the well, Department Kevin, of Homeland Security? Kevin McAleenan is the current acting director now of replacing uh, former Secretary Nielsen. Uh, but he, it's interesting with Kevin McAleenan because he does have the respect of the hardliners within the Trump administration. But if you go back to a speech he gave at the Bipartisan Policy Center last summer in 2018, he was quite critical of some of the policies that Secretary Nielsen had endorsed, most notably cutting off aids to Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador. Now, Secretary of State Pompeo this week came out and said that he was on board with that. So we're still in a wait-and-see mode for how they, they all fit together. Yeah, the Trump administration not always agreeing or <laughs> appreciating, shall we say, that type of disparity. Yeah. yeah, well, on the issue of this pardon, uh, joke, no joke, I mean, but does it really matter? Is, is it a moot point? Well, I think at this point it really has become that, just because of all of the, in, in the, all of the uh, divide that you've seen on that front. This week, the Attorney General testified uh, before the House Appropriations Committee and said he's getting ready to release a redacted version of the Mueller report. What do, you, what, what do we expect? Any day now. You know, I was at that hearing, and following that hearing, I interviewed the chairwoman of the committee, Nita Lowy, yeah. Democrat from New York, and she said, essentially, it's not going to be good enough. Democrats are pushing for the complete, full release, unredacted version of this report. Republicans are saying, well, if it relates to national security or if there were aspects of the investigation no. uh, that have to be redacted, they ought to be. But Chairwoman Lowy telling me, essentially, they might have to use subpoena power. I was going to say, what lengths will they go? And that obviously being the most extreme. Yeah. One of the things we heard is that um, the attorney general uh, testified that spying did occur. People were surprised. Then there was some backtrack. And we now, have a sense now of where this is. There's an investigation into the investigation. And polls suggest, I mean, it's like, but polls suggest uh, that Republicans want that, that the conservative base wants to see that. They feel that uh, that this was an unfair investigation, as the president has tweeted, a quote-unquote witch hunt. Yep. Uh, and now that, and that timeline for that uh, will likely be within the next couple of months. So 20 now in the Democratic field. In get ready. Race I'm ready. President. Still no Joe. I want to get on that campaign trail. Right. Still no Joe. <laughs> no. But the question is, who do you follow? And yeah. Oh, there's like going. everyone, everyone's running for president these days. Pete yeah. Buttigieg, formerly likely going to announce tomorrow uh, in Indiana. It's, yeah. He's been in a back and forth with the, former, with the current vice president, uh, Mike Pence. It's been interesting to see how that dynamic has played out. He's perceived as a rising star, right. a great personal story. Uh, but, you know, he's got a, it'll be interesting to see which type of Democrat and an economic message he starts to espouse. But that. still no Joe Biden. No Joe Biden yet. Yet. Still no yet. 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 Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.